Bethel University is where you can find this kinesiology professor. I've been teaching, I think, like 12, 13 years. Chris Carroll, yeah. a former hockey player turned coach, has had a front row seat to how the sport can impact your body. There's not a day that goes by that I don't, that I don't think about them or just the impact on, on, uh, on my life and so many other people's lives. It's been nearly five years since his brother, Andrew Carroll, died by suicide at 32 years old. Like he, he tried to make everybody feel like he was their best friend, you know, would always give people time. Andrew was a four-year hockey captain for the UMD Bulldogs and played eight years professionally afterwards, earning a spot on rosters at whatever cost. And, and he could score and he could do those things, but it was like, you know, he kind of saw that if I'm going to make it to the NHL, like I got to do it playing, you know, kind of third, fourth line role. And when Chris heard about the Columbia University study on hockey mortality rates, doesn't doesn't surprise me. It hit close to home. Um, you know, obviously we donated his brain out to, to Boston University so they could do a lot of that stuff. Andrew Carroll's brain showed extensive damage from CTE. Following in the footsteps of another big NHL fighter, Derek Bugard. He's mentioned in the new research that compared penalty minutes showing fighters or enforcers health to their peers. The average age of death for enforcers who have died was 47.5 compared to non-fighters at 57.7. 11 of the 21 enforcer deaths were linked to CTE. You know, his, his life certainly wasn't defined by, you know, what happened um, to end his life, but I just, you know, uh, and like I think of myself, I was just grateful, um, you know, to, uh, to have 32 years with him. And I